Do anything I want. I got guns. Christ, man. Dead maybe walking among us. Still United States of America. Hey, Walking Dead fans. This is going to be a video on why did the military fail in The Walking Dead. According to many survivors in both the television and the comic series, the military attempted to contain the outbreak but were ultimately overrun by the sheer numbers of the undead. So as we know, this is a fantasy apocalyptic story. And Robert Kirkman, the creator, even said it was in a different universe where zombie lore didn't exist. That's why they don't call them zombies. But what else was different? Maybe we don't know all of the physical laws or the different things that could be different the military doctrine, could be a lot of things that could play into why the military failed in this world, in this zombie apocalypse, but we don't know all of the facts and we don't know all of how it started. But most of us, when we think about the military and the slow moving zombies of The Walking Dead, we think, man, they could have taken them out easy. Why did they lose? Why did they get overrun? Let's look and kind of see what happened. I mean, in real life, we do think it, the cops may not have been able to, but the military would have stepped in and definitely taken care of the situation and created some type of control, and it worked. But, of course, in The Walking Dead, it didn't work because in the onset of the outbreak, the local law enforcement was overwhelmed. Things like FEMA couldn't handle the situation, the Red Cross, the hospitals, the local governments. So the military came in with a strategy designate a safe zone to stay in and then protect that safe zone. You know, in all of this, people are fleeing and running, driving away down the interstates. All of that's clogged up. There's a lot of chaos going on. Businesses are being looted. People are going crazy, acting crazy. People that were running things like the utilities and even some of the military and cops, they wanted to go maybe protect their families or get their families or, you know, try to get them to safety. So not only was there chaos on the ground with all the civilians, I'm sure the cops and the military had their own chaos happening within. We have had some talk in The Walking Dead talking about the early onset and what happened and how the, some of the military bases fell. But then in Fear the Walking Dead, we got shown a much more detailed first few days about the military coming into neighborhoods, setting up safe zones, and then those safe zones getting overrun. Early on in the outbreak in the U.S., Operation Cobalt was initiated. I did a video on Operation Cobalt, and I'll let you watch that video. I won't go into the Cobalt details here. We'll talk more broadly about the military in the U.S. and across the world. So in the early onset of the outbreak, there was a lot of chaos within the military. I think they didn't know what was going on and how to contain things. Uh, military checkpoints were getting overrun. And by sending in the military, unless they knew right off, which it didn't seem like they did, is aim for the head to take them down immediately. Um, a lot of militaries train to aim center body mass. And of course that doesn't stop the walker. You really have to evaluate the situation. One to the body, two to the body, three to the head. If whatever it is, a bear, uh, another living person, or a walker, whatever it is coming at you is growling and isn't stopping, the head is at least the third shot. And during the early onset of the outbreak, look at what Herschel thought about the people he put in the barn. So many people thought it was a sickness and that maybe people could be fixed or cured. So a lot of military and law enforcement as well could have been reluctant to shoot civilians. But of course the military has tanks and helicopters. But of course those things need support and if the support system fails, then those operating vehicles can fail as well, from mechanics to refueling stations. So how long a guy could survive inside of a tank depends on how much food and water he has before he has to get out of the tank to either refuel or get food and water, and does he make it while outside of the tank. Those things drink a lot of fuel, and they have to be maintenanced. And definitely don't forget that anybody inside a safe zone dying of anything, heart attack, cancer, gunshot wound, uh, somebody getting mugged, anything could happen, anybody dies and it's not a head wound, then there you go, there's walkers inside the safe zone. But look at these guys, these guys are not warriors, these are kids. These are little kids who want to go home to mama. What kind of what's left of them? Dark thoughts, Travis, that's my enemy here. So I'm going to break in right here, and a lot of people reference other zombie shows and movies, and one of the big ones is World War Z. And of course the book so much different than the movie, 
And a lot of people says the book explains how the military fell. And they definitely did explain or do a more of a job of explaining how it fell in that story than The Walking Dead has even come close to. I think it's unique for that story in itself. Doesn't necessarily apply to The Walking Dead. Some of it does. But the big thing about World War Z, if people don't know, the movie's a lot different. The movie portrayed the zombies as kind of superhuman and they're not like that in the book so that changes everything dramatically there's just a lot of factors one can consider and we'll throw a bunch of them out there for an example the military makes a lot of noise they fire their weapons they kill the 30 zombies that are coming at them and then in a minute or two later 30 more are coming and they're like man they just keep coming when really the sound of the rifle shots are drawing more walkers in and maybe they haven't figured out that they're attracted to noise and that brings up a big thing about the noise thing. That really is the key to winning the war against the zombies in The Walking Dead is the noise thing if they had just figured that out early. But the thing is, they just didn't figure it out early enough before they were overrun. But we've seen in real life how long it takes sometimes after a disaster, like say a hurricane, for the government or some elements of the government to get the wheels rolling. This zombie thing happened so fast, it just seemed to overrun not just the government, but the military as well. Robert Kirkman said when the outbreak started, there were around 5,000 walkers to every one survivor. We're not going near that place, man. I got a new mission, Operation Get My Ass Back to San Diego. Let's go. So undoubtedly, somewhere along the chain of command, things started going bad. Maybe they did go in a bunker, but someone died within or was infected or was bitten when they went into the bunker, and that just ended everything from that point on. Then maybe the chain of command started breaking down, and all we had was rogue groups of military and maybe a few naval vessels. And from that point, it just kept breaking on down fairly quickly. And it's pretty much a genre thing where the zombies always win against the military. But the outbreak was unexpected. It spread quickly and it causes a lot of panic and mayhem and chaos. And we really have to believe that's kind of what happened in every country. Slowly but surely, the, the government and the high-ranking officials of the military, something happened and broke that chain and things started going bad. So either the upper levels of government and military went into hiding and went radio silent, or they got overrun somehow, either within a bunker or on a base. And then things just started breaking down, every man for himself, pretty much. But the military does have a lot of firepower. They have a lot of bullets. They have high caliber weapons, like a 50 caliber machine gun would rip a horde of zombies into a bunch of pieces. You know, it wouldn't matter if the head was laying on the ground still alive or the head and part of a shoulder or torso. It wouldn't have any arms or legs. It couldn't do anything. So they'd be easily disposed of at that point. We have explosives. We have helicopters we could stay up in the air with a machine gun but a lot of that would depend on setting up some type of noise maker and drawing hordes away and into the open where you could kill them easily but it seems like everything was overrun before they could really think things through or set things up like that so why did the military fail in the walking dead i think communication channels broke down infrastructure broke down because you know they really uh, the military is built upon that. Without the infrastructure you need, without the support logistics, without the bases that you need, individual bases, you know, different bases sometimes do different things, specialized type jobs. And if you couple that along with what happened, a world that doesn't or hasn't known anything about zombie lore, and then suddenly the dead are walking around, of course you would think they were sick. Of course, if it was a loved one, you would think, maybe I can help this person. Of course, if you were a police officer or a military person, you may not want to kill a civilian or a bunch of civilians. In the beginning, in the first few days, there was definitely chaos and panic. And do I shoot this person or not? Just a lot of confusion going on, which allowed the outbreak to really take seed. Something else that happened in the early days is that they tried to contain not only the outbreak, but the civilians and civilian areas. But of course, this would prove futile in every situation and deplete more resources, bullets, food, water, men, first responders, cops, doctors, nurses, 
all of these people would be the some of the first to get bitten and infected because they didn't know how to handle the situation properly. And after the first few days or week that this happened, the civilian population would be so much harder to control with so many infected people. I think it was the governor that said the main problem there is the average weekend warrior was worried more about his wife and kid than he was about driving his ass to Atlanta to off corpses. Whole guard station a mile away, completely abandoned. So a lot of people have said, just get in some tanks and roll right over them and go refuel and roll right over them some more. Have a guy up in the turret shooting uh, the 50 cal, knocking them to pieces. And if all of this was pre-planned and they could really set something up, some type of offensive, maybe that would have worked. But it just seems like they didn't have enough time. And yes, it was written that way. And Possibly, yes, uh, Robert Kirkman doesn't understand bullets and bombs and how the military works. But that would be the genre. You know, if the military had won, we wouldn't have a TV show. But there's a lot of speculation out there. There's some military hold up somewhere. There's either the upper levels hidden in bunkers somewhere. There's some warships or aircraft carriers stationed off the coast. Or maybe there's still a base or two that's operational. It very well could be, but at the moment, as far as the clues that we get from the story, the comics, and things we know about what Robert Kirkman has said and other things, the military was overrun pretty quickly, just like we saw in Fear the Walking Dead. Everything started to break apart within a week or two, and it was pretty much every man for himself. But it's definitely something cool to discuss, all of the things that could have happened, things we don't know, things we can theorize about, and it's really cool when people in the military chime in and say, this is what probably would have really happened. So definitely, I look forward to the discussion in the comments below. Would it really happen that way? Probably not. I think our military is some tough-ass son of a bitches, and they would get the job done, and we probably wouldn't even blink an eye at it. Thanks for supporting the channel, and as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more dead stuff.